So welcome to our webinar, What's Your Body Telling You? It's a presentation of Discover Healing. What we're going to discuss today is how your discomfort may actually be vital communication from your body. And we're going to talk about the six hidden imbalances that may be causing problems for you right now and how you may be able to correct those underlying imbalances by following four simple steps. So this is me. I'm your host today, Dr. Bradley Nelson. I'm a retired holistic chiropractor. A medical intuitive, expert in energy medicine, best-selling author of The Emotion Code and creator of The Body Code System. So let's go back to the beginning. What happened, I developed kidney disease when I was about 13 years old. And, uh, and it was really kind of terrifying because the pain, uh, I've never had pain like that since then. And to be so young and yet to have these terrific pains that would you know, take my breath away or, or knock me down. Uh, that's how bad these pains were. That was really scary. And my parents were very scared. They took me to the hospital. They found out that there was no medical treatment available for me at all. And that my problem was about 50% fatal. I had about a 50% chance of surviving. They did not do kidney transplants back in those days. Okay. Uh, this would have been about 19, oh man about 1969 okay uh, no kidney transplants and so if my kidneys died I was going to die that was it for me well my parents didn't give up they kept looking and they found a couple of holistic doctors in our town that they took me to and they started working with me and followed these same four simple steps we're going to talk about today and they made the conditions right for me to recover and it worked I got better so I went into the healing arts. That was my inspiration, really, to go into the healing arts. And I devoted my life to learning how to help people and how to help the body. And I developed this habit. Going into the healing arts was an answer to prayer, literally an answer to prayer for me. If you've ever had one of those, you know what I'm talking about. So when I got into practice, I thought, okay, well, you know, the higher power has gotten me into this. So maybe that higher power will help me now. So I developed this private personal habit with everybody that I saw. Uh, over uh, the, about 20 or so years that I was in practice in one form or another. And it was a totally private, totally personal habit. But when I'd go to work on somebody, before I would touch them, I would just take a moment and just ask for help from up above. And if you believe in a higher power, then you know what I'm talking about. It turns out that healing is actually really, really simple. We used to think that healing was something that was very, very difficult that uh, would take years and years of study, lots of money and uh, lots of blood, sweat and tears. And it turns out it's actually really simple. And this is the simplest method of healing that I think you're ever gonna see, okay? And what happened was about a year after the Emotion Code book first came out in 2007, I woke up one morning and uh, my mind was full of instruction. And this was the instruction, you, need to take everything that you have learned about natural healing and put it into a self-study course that anyone can learn and make it available to everyone everywhere. I don't know if you've ever had this happen. This was such a singular, amazing thing to wake up and to be literally told this from that higher power was really interesting. And, and I remember thinking, well, oh, are you sure about this? This sounds like it could take quite a bit of work. And it took a, about a year of well, lots of work to put together the first emotion code. Then in 2013, we put together the next version of the body code. And there is another version that's coming out soon. We're going to talk about that later. But anyway, what I found was that your body and mind are very much intricately connected. And your subconscious really controls your health. And you can discover what your body really needs by asking the subconscious mind using yes and no questions. And changing your body's energy can really totally change how you feel, and it can happen very rapidly. And hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll see that today on this webinar. And this can even be done at a distance, and so you're going to see that done today. And if you're lucky, we might even work with you. We can't work with everybody, but, but we'll see how that works. So now you can discover this power, too. It's really your turn. You already have what it takes. You've got this ability within you, and you just need to discover it. So first of all, you, all of us, we deserve meaningful solutions. You know, society, especially in the West, in the industrial countries, the first world countries, we don't really focus much on prevention. And so we wait until there's a crisis that's happening and then we act, think about it, that's most people when they go to the hospital, 
they're having some kind of emergency. Nobody wants to go to the hospital unless they really are desperate, right? And so they're having a crisis that requires drastic intervention, right? It requires sometimes heroic measures that can be performed. Medicine is great at drastic intervention, isn't it? Uh, the Western medical system is amazing at, uh, at performing heroic feats to save people's lives and so on. But most of the time, that's not what we need. Most of the treatments that are available today actually just cover up people's symptoms. Most of the drugs that are prescribed really just suppress people's symptoms. And yet they have a whole plethora of side effects, uh, many of which end up being life-threatening. If you watch TV for 10 minutes on any channel, you're going to see a number of drug ads, right? We've all seen those. And by law, they have to list the side effects. Imagine if they didn't have to list the side effects by law. There wouldn't be any side effects, believe me. They would remove those immediately. And it would just, you would just think, wow, this is just the best thing in the whole world and no problem at all, right? <laughs> so what we have found is there are really four reasons why people live with discomfort. Uh, one of those reasons, and for those of you that are dealing with discomfort right now, one or more of these are going to apply to you, so listen carefully. The first reason why people live with discomfort is that they accept limitations. People say things like, well, you know, my dad had low back pain, and his dad had low back pain, and I have low back pain, it's chronic, and I guess that's just how it is for me. That's my life. People accept limitations. That's one reason. Another reason is simply lack of information. And this is a big one. Most people are, at least in the West, especially in America, are so conditioned by the media that if you've got some kind of discomfort, there's a drug for that. And that's what drugs are for. And we grow up learning this and believing this. And so the fact that there may be alternatives out there that may be even more effective with less or no harmful side effects is something that we're just simply not aware of. And so that's lack of information. Number three, well, people ignore their body's communication. Men are especially good at this in the West, but uh, we all do this. We have some kind of discomfort in the body. We have uh, some mental or physical or emotional issue going on. And what you need to understand is that any symptom whether it's physical or mental or emotional, is really a communication from your body. Now, in Western medicine, uh, it's looked at and understood that the symptom is the problem, right? Oh, you've got migraine headaches? Well, here's a drug we can give you that's so powerful you won't feel the migraine headaches. There are harmful side effects to this drug, but you're going to have to live with those. But we look at it completely differently. We would look at the migraine headache and say that's a communication from the body saying there's something else wrong. And today on this webinar, I promise you, you are going to see this in action. You're going to see how people's discomfort is communication from the subconscious mind that there is something else wrong. The discomfort that we have is not the problem, contrary to what everybody in the world believes, okay? The discomfort is not the problem. So, we ignore those communications because a lot of the time we just don't know what to do and people typically will tend to ignore those communications until they get so severe they end up having to go to somebody and then getting some kind of a drug to suppress the symptom but it, that's just insanity and you're going to see why in a minute now the last reason why people live with discomfort is what we call secondary gain this one is an, uh, an interesting one this is where people kind of get almost addicted to their problem because they get benefits from having it. Well, you know, if I get a migraine, I don't have to do the dishes. Or if my back hurts really bad, I can just go lay down and I don't even have to go to work. I can check out of that, you know, things like that. That can be a, a tough one. So let's take a look at this. On the left, we have the circle of untruth. All the lies in the world exist inside that circle. On the right hand, we have the circle of truth. All the truth that exists in the world is in this circle on the right, okay? Now, most of us like to believe that we're living our lives solely over here. But the truth is most of it are living our lives somewhere in the middle, okay? 
um, some of the things we may believe aren't true. Some of the things we believe are true. Most of the things we believe are true, probably, but you never know. I mean, it's different for everybody. Um, a, a true sign of a mature person is when you're able to actually understand that maybe what you've been thinking was untrue all your life, you find out is actually true. Or maybe you find out that something that you thought was true, actually maybe you're realizing maybe isn't true. And now we've all had uh, that kind of a moment, right? Raise your hand if you've had that kind of a moment where suddenly you find out, oh, well, maybe this isn't really true. That takes a mature person to be able to deal with that kind of a, of a moment, that kind of an epiphany, that kind of a paradigm shift. Well, I want to tell you that there are three things that I have learned that I that I know are true. One of these is that you are a being of pure energy. Even though maybe you weigh 180 pounds or whatever, you weigh a certain amount, your body's solid, it's three-dimensional, right? Um, but really that body of yours is pure energy. Uh, your body is 99.9999999% empty space. Some physicists recently figured out that uh, if you could take all the empty space from everyone's body in the world, you could fit every single person on the planet, all 7 billion of us, into a little box the size of a sugar cube. Our bodies are energy. That's truth number one. Ask any physicist, especially any, any quantum physicist, they'll absolutely tell you that is true. That's a known fact, right? But number two is that negative energies can affect you. And number three is that making changes in your body's energy can help you to feel better. And sometimes that can happen right away. So let's talk a little bit about energy. Everything is made of energy, everything in the universe. Thought is energy, emotions are energy, our bodies, uh, the chair you're sitting on, uh, your home, your car, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, it's all ultimately just made of energy. Now, some energy takes the form of physical matter, so we can see it with these carbon-based eyes. Some of it, though, is invisible, like, for example, thought, okay? Um, thought is also energy. Now, we have this invisible energy body or spirit within us that uh, has been referred to anciently as the key or the chi or the prana, depending on where you were in the world. And um, your physical body is energy in the form of matter. So we really have this dual nature. We've got this invisible part of us, uh, and then we've got this physical part of us. Well, energy affects us. One type of energy will affect another type of energy. And therefore, because we are made of energy, we are affected by other energies. Hopefully that should make sense pretty elementary, right? There's a four-step formula to remove the causes of discomfort that we like to use. And these are the simple steps, okay? It's uh, discover, to expose, to release, and to empower. So let's take a look at what these four steps are. First of all, step one is to discover. And really what you're discovering is that your discomfort may actually be communication. Think of that. How cosmic is that? What a, what a shift in how we look at things. But I'm telling you, this is absolutely the truth, that your discomfort is communication from your subconscious mind. And step one is also to discover that imbalances could be the root cause of that discomfort see none of us like to be in a state of discomfort we all want to get rid of the discomfort but we have to realize the discomfort is communication from your subconscious now hold on to that idea okay because as i'm working with volunteers you're going to see this in action so step two is to expose and that's to gain information about those imbalances to figure out what those are, what's going on with those. We use the body code to figure that out. And we are simply seeking answers from your subconscious mind. Now, your subconscious mind may very well hold the key. We believe that all the information about what's causing your discomfort may be located in your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is absolutely brilliant. It truly is a genius, although you may not feel like a genius. That subconscious within you is 99 plus percent of your intelligence. And it's a massive database of information. Uh, your subconscious mind remembers everything you've ever done, every face you've ever seen in a crowd, everything you've ever eaten or tasted or touched or smelled, 
It's all in there in that subconscious mind. So it knows you and it knows what you need. So how can we get information out of that subconscious mind? Well, we use muscle testing as our hotline to the subconscious. We use it to get yes and no answers. And, and I'll show you again how this works in a few minutes. So then step three, once we identify those things in step two, we can release those imbalances. And we can do that in seconds uh, with energy, which is just our intention, with physics, which is magnetic energy, and science, which is the acupuncture system. And if this sounds complicated, don't worry, it's actually drop dead simple, okay? Step four is the empower step, and that's automatic. Uh, steps one through three, empower your body's ability to take over and restore things as they should be. Now, sometimes people get instant relief. Sometimes it's immediate, sometimes it's gradual, and processing is normal. So. Uh, when we release things, sometimes people go through a little bit of a processing period where they may feel a little emotionally off for a day or so. That's normal, okay? We probably, if this webinar is like most of the webinars we do, you will probably see uh, some interesting things happen. So what is the body code? Well, the body code is this powerful new energy healing technology uh, that can be used to help yourself and your loved ones. It is simple enough for a child to use it. In fact, we have children using it successfully in different parts of the world. And yet it's so powerful that uh, healers who have been practicing for many, many years, for decades, are now relying on it to help their clients and their patients. It's a very simple but uh, powerful self-study course. We believe it's the most powerful self-study course that exists in the world, actually. Now, the body code may also help you to live a healthier, happier life. It may help you to prevent illness and disease. It might help you to create more love. It might help you to find empowerment and so on. So the body code is really this system that I put together during the years that I was in practice, trying to help people to get well. And what I found was uh, I could talk to people's subconscious minds and ask their subconscious internal computer systems, what was really wrong with them. And I found that there were really six kinds of imbalances that all of my patients were suffering from that, um, and it didn't matter how old or young they were, it didn't matter what their problem was, there were really six kinds of imbalances that I might find on someone, no matter their age or whatever. And so let's take a look at these really quickly. Up here on the top right, we have pathogens. Pathogens are viruses, bacteria, fungus, uh, problems, uh, parasites that get into the body instead of housekeeping, okay? Those shouldn't be there, obviously, if you want to be totally healthy. Misalignments, any tissue in the body can misalign. I started out as a chiropractor, realigning things and found uh, great success just doing that, helping people to get well. Later, I found that any tissue in the body can misalign. And then after that, I found that uh, misalignments generally have an underlying cause that is usually in this area. And these are energies. So here is a ball of emotional energy that has gotten trapped in this uh, very fit guy's body. There are other kinds of energies that can become imbalanced as well. Here we have circuits and systems. Uh, the body is very highly organized into circuits. Uh, every organ and gland you can think of as having a circuit in the body. The systems of the body, the acupuncture system, the meridian system, and the uh, cardiovascular system, all of this uh, this is where we find all of the highly organized systems, and those can be imbalanced as well. And if so, they can be corrected. Down here, we have toxicity. Of course, we live in a very, very toxic world now, and uh, the more toxic you are, uh, the more likely you are going to be to have some kind of symptom. And then over here, we have imbalances of nutrition and lifestyle. Now, when I was a kid growing up, uh, my mother was very much into nutrition and taking vitamins and things like that, and so people said that uh, she was a health nut. And back in those days, back in the 1960s and before, if you took vitamins, people actually thought you were a nut, okay? I mean, literally, they thought you were kind of off of your nut. <laughs> so anyway, these kinds of imbalances show up here. So first of all, what we're going to do here with our volunteers is uh, you'll notice that I will be working with them at a distance. Now, we have thousands of uh, practitioners around the world. We've got... Uh, 
somewhere around 5,600, I think, uh, emotion code practitioners around the world, over a thousand body code practitioners. We have people in 78 countries now. Many of them work with people in other countries that they may never actually even meet in person, but whose lives they may very well change. So what is a proxy connection? Well, the human body has this amazing ability to set aside its own needs to act on behalf of someone else. And so how this works is uh, it's really a long distance connection. It's an energetic connection with another person or an animal. And uh, quantum physicists, uh, when we talk to them about this, they instantly understand this. It makes perfect sense to them. And they have terms to describe this, uh, terms like entanglement and action at a distance and so on. But what you're gonna see here today is the practical application of quantum physics. Energy has no physical boundaries. There is no phone connection needed, okay? And anybody can learn to do this. So any of you on this webinar can learn how to do this yourselves. And uh, you can do the same thing that I'm gonna be doing here with our volunteers. And in fact, it's demo time. So uh, if you are wanting to volunteer here and you already sent in your, um, you know, the little, uh, uh, the little blurb about what's going on with you and you know yes i agree uh what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll see what we can figure out with you okay all right so let's give me just a minute here all right let's see let's talk to uh, now go ahead and raise your hand if you want to volunteer for us okay go ahead and raise your hand if you want to volunteer and i'm going to pick somebody here and let's see all right okay let's talk to matthew matthew there you go can you hear me yes sir how are you all right good fantastic thanks for joining us so matthew i'm going to fill out a little form here really quickly just so we can kind of keep track of what's going on how old are you right now uh 35 sir 35 all right and where are you calling from just out of curiosity uh georgia Okay, Georgia. Beautiful Georgia. All right, and today, let's see, is 11 2019. Whoops, there we go. All right, so you're having a chronic discomfort uh, with neck, right, and shoulders? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty banged up from a little bit of service in the, uh, in the Marine Corps and then some other issues, and I got hit by a car on a motorcycle back in 2013 as well. Oh, no, okay. Well, thank you for your service, first of all. And how long ago was your your accident again? Uh, I got hit by a car in 2013. Okay. All right, so the, the intensity of all of these things right now, how would you rate? Uh, and out of all of these things, what's bothering you the most right now? Uh, the most is probably, I think it's like a carpal tunnel that runs down from my neck all the way into my left hand from my shoulder to my wrist and everything. Okay, how would you, um, I'm gonna make a note of that one. So you've been diagnosed then with carpal tunnel on that? Yeah. And the, 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 that discomfort goes from where to where? Uh, I have uh, compressed vertebrae in my neck, so it starts pretty much like the base, like the base of my skull and my neck, and then goes down all the way through my shoulder and into my, uh, my wrist and my hand. Okay, and that's the worst today. Yeah, that's pretty much the most active because I'm usually carrying uh, my little uh, six-month-old that's in my arms at the moment, actually. <laughs> okay. And so, well, congratulations. And how bad would you say that is today, right now? Uh, today's been between seven and eight. Okay, seven to eight on the pain scale or the discomfort scale. Okay, great. All right. So, so let's focus in on that. And that's been going on for how long, that particular one, the left um, arm? Uh, that one's pretty much been since about 2013, but uh, recently it seemed to have gotten a lot worse to the point where my my forearm really even starts swelling up out of nowhere. Okay, got, so you broke up just a little bit. You said it's gotten a lot worse lately. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, great. All right. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. First of all, uh, I'm going to take a moment and ask for some help for us from up above. So feel free to join me if you want, and we'll just do that for a second here. 
All right. So uh, here we have the body code on the right side. All right. Here is where I've been taking notes. So the first thing that we want to do is I want to make sure that I am connected with you. Now, usually when I ask for help, that connection gets made. It's an energetic connection, kind of like a Wi-Fi connection, okay, but actually a lot more advanced um, beyond our ability to really comprehend completely. But uh, I'm going to be muscle testing myself for you. First thing I want to know is, and by the way, what we call this the ring and ring method. And so when I ask a question, if the answer coming from your subconscious mind to mine is yes, what will happen is my body will be strong. And when I try to pull these rings apart, they'll stay together. Uh, when I ask a question and the answer coming from your subconscious mind to mine is no, my body will weaken slightly and the rings will break. Okay, so that's how we get yes or no. So first of all, I want to know is, uh, first thing I want to know is, are we connected energetically? Can I act as proxy for you? Same question, we get a yes answer. Okay, so now we're connected. My subconscious is dialed in. We've got a full duplex, full-blown connection now between the two of us, and I can ask any question and uh, get pretty much any answer that I want as far as what's going on with you. So let's ask, first of all, <clears throat> Excuse me, is there an underlying reason for this discomfort that you're having on the left side? And the answer is yes. Immediately I get a yes answer. Now what we do is we go to the body code. And we want to know, we want to track down what this is. See, your subconscious mind has a specific reason in mind. I don't know what the reason is. I have no idea. Anything can cause anything. But watch how quickly we can figure out what this first imbalance is. Is this imbalance on the right side of the body code? And we get a no. So that means it's on the left side. Now, you, the next imbalance may be on the right side. I don't know. But this first one is on the left side. So we'll start at the bottom and we'll ask, all right, is it a toxin of some kind? And your subconscious mind says no. So is it something in circuits and systems? And that's also weak. So it's up here. So it's an energy of some kind. That's strong. We'll go there. And is it something on the left side of this chart? No, so that means it's over here. We'll start at the bottom. Is this something emotional? Yes, so there's something emotional going on. Let's go here. And uh, we'll ask, uh, is this a trapped emotion? It is, okay, so this is the emotion code which is built into the body code. So one of these emotions is stuck in your body uh, as a little ball of energy and it's part of the reason why you're having this trouble. Let's see what it is. Is this emotion listed in column A? No. So that means it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows in column B? No. So it's in an even row in column B. We have 15 emotions left out of 60 on the chart. Is it in row two in column B? No. We have 10 left. Is it in row four in column B? Yes. We have five of these left now. So is the emotion depression? No. Is it frustration? No. Is it indecisiveness? No. Is it panic? No. Is it taken for granted? Actually, that one shows up strong, okay? It's a trapped emotion of taken for granted. We need to know more about this. Actually, we don't. Now, when we ask that question, uh, what we're doing really is we're asking if we need to know, if your subconscious mind needs to bring more information to conscious awareness before it will allow this energy to be deleted from your body. And your body says no. So what I'm going to do now to release this, because we're acting, I'm connecting, I'm connected with you, I'm acting as proxy for you. Uh, I'm going to use the governing meridian, and this is the meridian that starts with the tailbone, and goes straight up the back, over the top of the head, to the inside of the upper lip. I'm going to put some energy, just using my hand, into that meridian, okay? Three swipes into that meridian, and let's ask, did we release that emotion of taking for granted? And we did. Now, Matthew, what I'd like you to do right now is I'd like you to just... Um, Maybe walk around a little bit, maybe shift the baby to the other side, you know, move your neck around a little bit and uh, walk around just a little bit. And let's see how the how that discomfort is now, okay, compared to how it was before. And we'll just see if we can get a number on it, okay? Uh, actually, it felt like a, almost like a cool pingling sensation in my upper shoulder. And okay. Slight bit in the neck, but not much. Feels like it kind of shifted okay. my back. Okay, so you, so the discomfort level in that is where now? Um, it toned down a little bit, maybe a six. Maybe a six. Okay, all right, that's fine. All right, let's keep going. So this is how you use the body code. You find one thing at a time. Let's go back to the home page, 
And let's take a look now and let's ask, okay, is there an underlying reason or another underlying reason uh, why you're having this discomfort in that arm? And the answer is yes, okay. And is the reason on the right side of our chart this time? No, it's on the left side. Is it an energies area? It is, it's up here. So let's go here. And is it something on the left side of this chart? It is. Is it something post-traumatic? It is. So we'll go here to post-traumatic. Now these are post-traumatic energies, energies that get stuck in the body, usually after some kind of a trauma. And so let's ask about this. Is it something on the left side of the chart? Yes. Is it a psychic trauma? No, it's actually a physical trauma. Now physical trauma is where you receive some kind of a blow. Now it could be a physical blow or it could be an emotional blow, okay? But the energy of that is stuck in the body and that's part of this. So uh, let's ask, was this actually a physical trauma that happened to you? It was, we need to know more about this, we do. Well, let's ask, uh, you got in the bike wreck uh, in 2013, was this from that? Okay, it was, all right. Do we need to know more about this? We don't, let's release this. So one, two, three. We're releasing that energy from you. Okay, go ahead and take a walk now. Let's see how that's feeling now. Actually, that felt like something released into my hand. Okay, cool. So, yeah. um, so if you kind of focus in on that whole thing all the way down that arm, how's it feel now compared to how it was feeling before? Let's see if we can get another number on it. Definitely dropped down about four or five. Four or five. All right, awesome. Let's go back to the homepage. We cleared that one. Okay, and this is how this works, right? It's actually really, really simple. This is why kids can do this. See. For example, a couple of years ago, we found out about this little girl in Mexico City that would use her mom's iPad and just, you know, touch these because it runs on mobile devices and she would find things, and fix things, and or hand it to her mom and say, "Mommy, Daddy has this," and she was usually right. Let's ask: Is there another underlying reason for this discomfort that you've been having? And your body says yes. Is this next reason on the right side of the chart? No. Is it in the energies area? It is. So we're going to back here. Is it on the left side of this chart? No. So uh, is it addictive heart energy or an allergy or an intolerance? It's definitely something emotional. Is this another trapped emotion? No. Is it a heart wall? No. So this is actually an emotional resonance. Now, this is a little different. This is not in the emotion code. This is only in the body code. But an emotional resonance is where you feel an intense emotion and then either your whole body or some part of your body is left kind of ringing. Uh, like reverberating with oh, that yeah. emotional frequency, right? <laughs> and so let's see what this is. Is this in column A? And your body says no. So it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? No. So is it in row two or row four or row six? So it's in row six, column B. Is the emotion pride? No. Is it shame? No. Is it shock? No. Is it unworthy? No. Is it worthless? Ah, no. Now, when you're taken to a column in a row and you can't get the answer, you ask, is this inherited? And this is. So um, so let's make a note here. Uh, this is an inherited trapped emotion. Uh, well, actually, it's a trapped emotional. Um, that's not really, we'll say it's an inherited emotional resonance. Okay. These are a little different. Um, not like a ball of energy, just like part of your body is just ringing um, and it's affecting this. So this, uh, let's see what this is. Uh, this is an inherited thing. So did you inherit this from mom or dad? Okay, got it from your father. It might go back further. Let's see what it is. Is it inherited pride? Is it inherited shame, inherited shock? This is an inherited resonance of shock from his dad, from his mom, so his father's mother. Did she get this from somebody earlier? No. So this is your grandmother, your father's mother. Something happened to her before your dad was conceived and she shared this with him, okay? It passed to him and then when you had, uh, when your dad conceived you, um, he passed it to you and now you have, uh, you have a child, right? Do you have more than one? I have three, yes. Three, okay. So did you pass this to any of those kids, to all of those kids? So all of those biological kids this passed, you passed to them as well. And science is bearing this out now. Uh, they're finding that, uh, for example, people who survived the Holocaust, their grandchildren now, they're finding that their DNA is different. 
um, and they're finding that their markers for stress and their susceptibility to stress is way different than a normal population because of what their grandparents went through. Uh, science is finding that animals will pass down a traumatic memory somehow up to 14 generations down the line, and that's what this is as well. Same thing. So do we need to know anything else about this? All right, so let me see. All right, uh, not really. So let's release this. Now, we do 10 swipes to release an inherited energy like this because we're releasing it not only from you, but also from, in this case, your dad, his mom, and also all your three kids, okay? So let's ask that we release that inherited resonance of shock from you. Did that release from everybody else? It did, and also from your three kids. Yeah, okay, go ahead, stand up now, walk around a little bit, and let's see how that feels compared to how that was feeling before. Some of the creaking went away in my neck. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that? a lot better, uh, Some of the creaking even went away in my neck, but it feels like it shifted over to the right side in my shoulder now. Okay, all right. How is that left side now? How would you rate it, zero to ten? Uh, it's it's still probably three or four. Three or four, okay. All right, so let's go back to the home page. Now, sometimes uh, when we're using the body code, you know, we're not necessarily chasing symptoms generally, but we use people's symptoms to kind of give us a gauge of, of how things are going. Sometimes symptoms can change right away. And we've already seen, you know, a pretty good change. You were seven or an eight, now it's a three or a four. Let's see if there's something else going on with this. So let's ask, um, is there another underlying reason for this discomfort that you've been having? The answer is yes. And uh, is it on the right side of our chart? No, it's on the left side. So is it a toxin, something in circuits and systems? It's something in the energies area here. Is it something on the left side of this chart? No. So uh, let's see, is it something emotional? It is, okay. And so is this a trapped emotion? It is. And is it in column A? No, it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? Yes, is it in row one? So this one is in column B, row one. So is this effort unreceived? No. Is it heartache? No. Is it insecurity? Yes. This emotion is insecurity. Okay. So, do we need to know more about this? We do. Okay. And so you're 35. Let's divide your life a little bit. Does, did this occur earlier than age 20? No. Between 20 and 30? Yes. You do 20 and 25, around 26 or 27. This goes back to around age 27. Okay. Do you remember what you were doing around age 27? Just uh, that, kind of that could have been when I was uh, falsely arrested and my daughter was kidnapped. I ended up uh, getting sole custody of my oldest child. Holy smokes. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's ask, is that what this was about? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So that experience, that energy, uh, that feeling got stuck in your body. And that's part of the reason why you're having these symptoms right now. That's what your subconscious mind is telling us. So let's see how much of a difference this is making. Let's go ahead. Do we need to know anything else about this? We don't. So let's release this, okay? And it just takes three swipes to release it. It's really simple. Now, I want you to walk around a little bit, move your neck around, you know, look left and right and up and down a little bit and move your arm a little and go ahead and move around. Now, the reason why I like to have people move around a little is because when they're having a physical issue going on and you release some kind of an underlying imbalance, what will happen is muscles that weren't working before, uh, bone are gonna be possibly realigning that weren't aligned before. Lots of things are shifting and changing. When people get up and walk around a little bit, it just kind of accelerates that process. So. Upper body's definitely a lot better. It feels like all the weight just shifted to like my mid to lower back though. Okay. All right. Well, how about that left arm? How does that feel? A lot better. Okay. Can you put a number on it? Zero to ten? What do you think? It's it's still it's two or three. It's almost gone. Two or three. All right. It's almost gone. All right. Cool. Well, let's let's do one more. Okay. Uh, we've kind of got this on the run. Now think about this. Typically, <laughs> in a session where you're um, you're getting a session with a practitioner or you're working with somebody you'll typically be able to release maybe eight to 10 or maybe 12 imbalances in one shot, okay? And then the body will just be like, okay, give me a chance now to, to process and deal with this. 
because that's just how that works. So let's ask for one more. Is there another underlying reason uh, for this, this symptom that you've been having? The answer is yes. Is it on the right side? Oh, this time it's on the right side of the chart. Is it a pathogen? No. So is it a misalignment? It's a misalignment of something. Let's see what this is. So is this a misalignment on the left side of our chart? No. So it's the skeleton. That's the only thing on the right side. So we'll click here. So we divide the skeleton up into appendicular and axial skeleton. So is this the appendicular skeleton? No. So it's the axial skeleton. That's the only one left. So is it something in the vertebral column? No. Is it something in the skull? Yes. So let's go to the skull. So these are all the bones of the skull, and there's even more under here, but uh, uh, you know, in the facial bones. But let's take a look and let's ask, you see what your subconscious mind is saying to us? Is it saying, one of these bones in my skull is tweaked, imbalanced, unhappy in some way. So which bone is it? Is it a bone on the, on the left side of our chart here? No, it's on the right side. So is it the frontal bone? No. Is it one of these two parietal bones here? No. Is it one of the temporal bones? No. So that leaves the occipital bone and that's it. So your occipital bone forms the, the base of the skull and it's very important because um, your cerebrospinal fluid has to circulate up and down. And if that bone isn't moving right, then it creates stagnation there. This can create trouble all throughout your whole entire body. So your occipital bone, we would say, is imbalanced, unhappy, whatever. And usually there's an underlying cause for this kind of stuff. And is that the case here? Yeah, so there's an underlying cause of this. So let's go back to the home page and let's find the underlying cause. So your occipital bone is imbalanced, but it's imbalanced because of something else. What is that other thing? Is it on the right side of the chart? No. So on the left side, is it a toxin? Could be, but it's not. Is it something in circuits and systems? Could be, but it's not. It's something in the energies area. So is this something on the left side of this chart? No. So is it uh, addictive heart energy or an allergy or an intolerance? No, it's something emotional. So now, just so you understand, when, uh, when people first start getting worked on, um, 80 or 90% of the stuff that shows up is emotional, okay? And so that's what's happening with you right now. There's a lot of emotional stuff. As you start to get rid of all of that, then the other things can start showing up that are also in the body code. But that's typically how that works. So there's something going on. That bone is, is not happy. And it's because of something emotional. Is this a trapped emotion, a uh, heart wall? No, it's an emotional resonance. We found one of these before. And uh, what is this a resonance of? Is it a resonance of something in column A? No, it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? Yes. Is it in row one? No. Row three, it's in row three. Is this confusion? No. Is it defensiveness? No. Is it grief? Bingo. Grief. Do we need to know more about this? We do. You're three to five. Did this occur earlier than age 20? Yes. Earlier than 10? Actually, yes. Earlier than five? No. So sometime between five and 10, around five, around six, around seven, around eight. This is from around age eight. Now, I don't know if that rings any kind of a bell for you. This is accurate within a year, give or take. So you might have chronologically been seven. Chronologically nine, you're probably eight, but sometime around in that span, there was something that really that really affected you. You had some real deep grief about something. Does that ring any kind of a bell? Could have been issues with my parents at home. Uh, they were splitting around that time, but they were both heavy alcoholics. Oh, okay. Well, let's ask, is that what this was about? Yeah, it was about your parents. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. Do we need to know anything else about that? So think about this. Here you are, 35 years old. You've had this energy that's been imbalancing this bone back here um, probably this whole entire time. Is that true? Yeah. So um, do we need to know anything else about this? No, nope. let's release it. We're releasing this emotional resonance of grief that is short-circuiting this bone in the back of your skull. So here we go, one, two, three swipes, and let's ask, did we release that from you? And the answer there is yes. Okay, I want you to go ahead and stand up now, move around, and uh, move your neck around a little bit, you know, just walk around a little, move your arms, and let's see how things are feeling now compared to how they were feeling before. Definitely a lot better. I've been moving around most of the time, keeping it going, and uh, definitely feels a lot better. I actually got some range of motion in my neck that I haven't had in quite a while. All right, awesome.
All right. Okay, cool. So that discomfort now in that left arm, how's that feeling now compared to how it was feeling before? Uh, it's no more numb, tingly, burning feeling. It feels actually really good. It feels okay. back to normal. So back to zero? Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, cool. That's about all I can do on you today. But now I want you all to think about this, okay? Think about Matthew and these symptoms that he's had for all of these years. You know, normally we would we would think, well, sure, you've been traumatized and you had the bike wreck, and so this is you just have to live with this, right? That's what a lot of doctors will say. You got to live with this. Let's give you a more powerful painkiller and get you addicted to some, right? To something like, you know, Vicodin or who knows what. That's how the Western medical pharmaceutical system works. But look at the things that his body said were really the underlying causes. Feeling taken for granted, the physical trauma from the bike crash, an inherited resonance of shock from his grandmother, uh, insecurity around age 27 when, you know, the kidnapping and all of that, and then that occipital bone from his parents arguing and splitting up and being alcoholics when he was eight years old. Those were the underlying reasons of a lot of this. Now, of course, my uh, Matthew, there's there's probably more baggage to release, right? Um, oh yeah. <laughs> but we made a significant dent in it today. So um, so thank you for uh, being a volunteer. And yes, thank uh, you. We'll see. Yeah, we'll send you the results of this, and hopefully this will just continue to improve. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, you're so welcome. All right. So. Um, well, that was really fun, huh? Let's see. All right. Um, let's see if we can talk to... Let's see. Everybody's hands are still. Let's see if we can talk to Suzanne. Suzanne, hello. Can you hear me okay? Hi. Yes, I can. Can Hi. you hear me all right? Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, let me gather some data from you. Uh, how old are you right now? I'm 53. 53, okay. And where in the world are you calling from, just out of curiosity? I'm also in Georgia. You are? Whoa, it's Georgia yeah. Day today, fantastic. <laughs> uh, that's cool. I'm hoping to get out to Georgia one of these days and do an event. That'd so, be awesome. Yeah, we're working on that, getting something set up in Atlanta. Uh, Great, I'm not too far hopefully. from there. Yeah, hopefully for this coming year, we'll see what happens. So, so Suzanne, um, you mentioned that you've got back discomfort, right? Yeah, I've had four back surgeries um, years ago, but just never really recovered. Oh, okay, four four back surgeries. Okay, so are they calling those failed surgeries? They sometimes call things like that failed surgery. Yeah, so half of them work. are failed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um so is it your is it your back that you're having the discomfort most of it in right now, would you say? Um mostly my neck and shoulders today. Yeah, I've I've had lower back surgeries, so that's just a weak area that that I can um okay. exacerbate easily, but my neck and shoulders are the mostly the recurrent issue that didn't really oh, okay. resolve with a fusion and made okay. me have to quit so, working nine years ago. I'm young at heart, but this body, you know, <laughs> holds me back a lot. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can make a difference for you today. So how would you rate on a zero to 10 scale, zero being no discomfort at all and 10 being the most you can stand? How would you rate that neck and shoulder discomfort now at the at this moment? I would say a seven or eight. It's rare that I get below a seven. It's just like every day, worse in the morning when I first get up. But. Oops, okay. All right. And so the so that you date that back maybe to about nine years ago. That's really um, the surgeries were nine years ago, but the fibromyalgia was diagnosed 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Okay. Well, we're going to work on this discomfort in your neck and shoulders right now. How long would you say that's been going on? Um, that's the nine-year one, my last 
surgery on my neck was nine years ago. Oh, okay. So how it's many surgeries you had on your neck? Then. Um, just one. Okay. But it didn't work. It, my hands go numb quite often. Um, if I do anything with fine motor skills, my hands go numb. Okay. And that's why I had to stop my working at a desk. Oh, got it. Okay. Tangle. Okay. Well, all right. Let's uh, let's take a look and see what we can figure out here. We'll uh, we'll take a moment. First of all, this work really came from up above, and so we like to take a moment and just acknowledge that higher power and ask for a little help. All right, cool. So, um, so let's look for the underlying imbalances. Basically, what we're going to do, the reason why we call the body code the body code is because we use it to decode symptoms. In other words, um, here's your symptom. We've got this discomfort in the neck and shoulders, and we're going to decode it. In other words, what is your body really trying to tell us? The symptom is this discomfort, but what does that really mean? The discomfort is not the problem, even though it can seem like the problem in the moment you know, because it's so miserable, but but there is an underlying reason. So here we go. Let's decode this. So uh, first of all, let me see if I can turn on my camera. My my bandwidth here was a little bit bad, and so it made me turn off the camera a minute ago, but I got it back on again. So let's ask, first of all, are we connected? Yes, so I can act as proxy for you. Same question. I get a yes answer there. So let's find out here, Suzanne. Um, is there an underlying reason for this neck and shoulder discomfort that you're having? And the answer is yes. Okay, so we'll look at our body code chart and let's ask, okay, is, is the reason, now your subconscious mind has a reason in mind, but we can only deal with one reason at a time, not three or two or five, only one. And that's okay. What is this first underlying reason? Is it on the left side of the chart? It is. Is it a toxin of some kind? No. Is it something in circuits and systems? No. So it's in the energies area, we'll click here. Is it something on the left side of this chart? No. Uh, is it something emotional? It is. We'll go here. So is this a trapped emotion? It is. Okay, so that's the first reason. And is it in column A? No. So it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? Yes. Is it in row one or three? It's in row three, column B. Is it confusion? No. Is it defensiveness? No. Is it grief? No. Is it self-abuse? Yes. Okay. So first reason is a trapped emotion of self-abuse. Do we need to know more about this? Well, your body says, no, really. well, that's fine. That means we can go ahead and release it. So we'll search three swipes here. One, two, three. We do 10 if it's inherited. This was not. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and stand up, move around a little bit now, and let's see how that feels now. Zero to 10, and we'll just see. I'm kind of more aware of it. It's instead of a pain, it's more a stiffness. I more don't a stiffness. feel it as acute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how would you rate the discomfort just overall? I think it's dropped. Five or six. You put a number on it? Actually, five or six? Okay. Yeah, I think I think five or six. Five or six. All right. Awesome. So uh, let's go back to the home page and let's ask again, is there another underlying reason for this discomfort? And your subconscious mind says, yep, is this on the left side of the chart? No, this is on the right side of the chart. So is it a pathogen? It could be, but it's not. Is it a misalignment of some kind? It is. Okay, so let's go to misalignments. We'll click here. Is it something on the left side of our chart? No. So this is something in the skeleton. We'll go here. Is it in the appendicular skeleton? It could be, but it's not. Uh, so it's in the axial skeleton. Is it something in the vertebral column? No. Is it something in the skull? No. Is it something in the teeth? No. So that means it's in the thoracic cage. Hmm. So is it something on the left side of this chart? No. Is it one of the true ribs? No. Is it the manubrium? Yes. Okay. So the manubrium is this little bone at the top of the breastbone right here, right at the base of your throat. That bone is not happy. Now, as a chiropractor uh, for 30 years, I might find that bone out of alignment a little bit, and I might realign that somehow. But if there's an underlying cause for this misalignment, 
what's going to happen? It's not going to stay where I align it. It's not going to stay aligned. It's going to get out of alignment again, and I'll have to keep working on it over and over and over because if there's an underlying reason for this, you got to fix the underlying reason or the problem will never go away. Is there an underlying reason for this? The answer is yes. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. You never know what you're going to find with the body code. The, the, the body is so complex, but the body code makes it easy because it just takes you where it needs to take you. So your manubrium will say is imbalanced, unhappy, misaligned. There's an underlying reason that we got to figure that out. So let's decode what's going on with the manubrium. We'll go back to the home page. And uh, what's the underlying reason for this manubrium to be out of balance? Is it something on the right side? Is it on the left? Is it an energy? It's an energy. So is it something on the left side? No. Is it emotional? It is. We'll go here. Is this trapped emotion? So there's another trapped emotion uh, that's affecting your manubrium. So there's an emotion stuck right here in basically in that bone, affecting that bone, misaligning that bone, we'll say. What is the emotion? Is it on the left side or in column A? And that's a no. So it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? No. So is it in row two or four or six in row six, column B? Is the emotion pride? No. Is it shame? Is it shock? Is it unworthy? It's an emotion of feeling unworthy. Okay. Hmm. Feeling unworthy is not feeling good enough to do or be or have something. And so do we need to know more about this? Actually, we don't. But at some point in your life, that feeling got stuck right there. Does that ring any kind of bell? Um, yeah, I mean, interestingly, the, the back to the self-abuse, I've, I've had a couple of emotion code sessions over the phone with somebody in Texas, and that self-abuse mm -hmm. one came up before that I'm hard on yeah. myself. Yeah, so, um, and so you, you probably are kind of hard on yourself. Or you yeah, I, I want to be able to do more than I can. Um, the unworthy, um, I, I did seven years of infertility treatment, and I think mm -hmm. that that may come mm. from that. Could be. Um, Let's ask, yeah. is that what, was this about uh, not feeling good enough to, uh, to be able to get pregnant? Actually, yeah. Um, hmm. I think you nailed okay. it there. I did get past that. And um, well, in that okay. case, <laughs> I have two children. But <laughs> okay, good for you. But maybe that's well, do we stuck. Need to know? Yeah, it got stuck during those years. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else we need to know about this? No. So let's release it. One, three swipes over the governing meridian. And let's ask, did we release that from you? And we did. Okay, go ahead, stand up, move around a little bit now. And let's see how it's feeling now. Because that was, remember, what's happening is we're decoding the symptom and uh, this is what her subconscious mind is saying, is that these are the reasons, okay? Hmm. So I, I feel what, lighter, just lighter emotionally for sure. Okay. All right, and zero to 10 scale, how would you rate that discomfort that was that we started with about a seven or an eight? How would you I rate it? I feel like that? everything's lifting. Um, yeah, it's going down. Definitely, uh, okay. I'd say five. About a five. Okay, good. All right. Maybe lower. Well, yeah. Maybe lower. Maybe a four. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say four to five. Everything. Four to five. Okay. Lightening up. I felt like I had a big heavy blanket on me before, and it's, huh. it's like going. So let's go back to this little bone here, and let's ask: Is is that bone still imbalanced? No. So that bone is happy now. Is that right? Yeah, the bone is happy. Mm -hmm. Good. That's how we talk to the body. We ask if things are happy or not, which sounds funny, but it, it works really well. So now let's ask, um, okay, is there another underlying reason why um, you're having this uh, these symptoms and your body says yes? What's the next reason? Is it on the right side? No. So on the left, is it an energy? No. Is it something in circuits and systems? Yes. So this one is in here, okay? So uh, is that what you think? That was my Siri somehow picked that up. <laughs> Kind of creepy. So let's ask, um, what is this? Your subconscious mind is trying to take us to another imbalance. What is it? Is it something on the left side of the chart? No. So is it an organ uh, or a gland or a chakra? It's a chakra that's out of balance. Now the chakras are these deep energy centers of the body, right? And um, so they connect us with 
people and the universe and the earth and so on. So what chakra is this that's unhappy? Is it one of these on the right side? No. So is it root or sacral, solar plexus? Is it heart or throat? So it's the throat chakra. Now the throat chakra is all about speaking your truth. It's all about communication, independence and fluent thought and so on. It's linked to the thyroid gland. It's right in this area. That chakra is not happy. Is there an underlying reason? There usually is. So let's decode what the underlying reason is. What's the underlying reason? Is it on the right side? No, it's on the left. Is it something in the energies area? It is, so we'll go here. Is it something on the left side of this chart? No. Is it addictive heart energy or an allergy or an intolerance? No, it's something emotional. So is this a trapped emotion? Heart wall, this is an emotional resonance. We've seen a couple of those uh, today on the webinar. And so again, this is, an, this is a, a part of your body is left ringing with a certain frequency. And is this uh, a frequency of an emotion in column A? No, it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? Yes, is it in row one? No, row three, it's in row three, column B. Is it confusion? Is it defensiveness? Is it grief? Is it self-abuse? Is it stubbornness? Ah, okay, so this is actually an inherited hmm. uh, emotional resonance of something, one of these. Is it inherited? Yes. Is it inherited confusion? Is it inherited defensiveness? Is it inherited grief? It's an inherited resonance of grief that you got when you were conceived from your mother, no, from your father. Did he get it from somebody earlier? Yes, from his father, from his mother. So father's mother. Did she get it from somebody earlier? Actually, no. So it came from your father's mother, your grandmother. So mm -hmm. before your dad was conceived, she experienced grief. It got stuck in her body. She passed that to your dad when he was conceived and he passed that to you. And did you pass this to your kids? Yep. And you have how many kids, two? Two, yes. Did you pass it to both of them? Yeah. 16 and 19. Okay, so you pass this to them as well. Do we need to know anything else about this? We don't. Let's release this, okay? So this is inherited. So we do 10 swipes. Okay, and we'll do one more just for good measure. And did we release that um, inherited emotional resonance of grief? And did it we did, did it release from your father and from you and did it release from your mom, uh, his mom, yes. Did it also release from your two kids? From everybody. This is really an energy. So now let's go back and let's ask, okay, we found this because your throat chakra was unhappy, right? And there's your throat chakra. Mm -hmm. Let's ask, is your throat chakra happy now? It is. Okay, go ahead, stand and move around a little bit. Let's see how that feels now compared to how that was feeling before. Yeah, I've got more mobility. More mobility. In my neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that feels better. Okay, so how would you rate the discomfort level now? Start out about a seven or an eight. I'd, I'd say think? three or four. Wow, that's incredible. Three to four. Okay, cool. Well, let's do one more, shall we? Okay. <laughs> it's kind of on a roll. <laughs> this is amazing. We're, we're sort of on yeah. a roll. We've got it on the run. It's amazing, right? It really yeah. is. But what's really amazing, what's really truly amazing, I mean, there's some amazing things about this. Number one, finally, after all these years of mankind's history, we finally have a way to talk to the subconscious, which is the most powerful computer in the known universe. I mean, think about it. You know, you can take a ham sandwich that you ate for lunch uh, and your subconscious mind can break that down and create new blood cells with that. I mean, our subconscious minds are more intelligent, I believe, than we're capable of comprehending. And so now finally, for the first time in history, we have a way to ask questions of the subconscious, get answers and figure out what's really going on, right? And what our problems are really stemming from. And it's not what we think, it's not some kind of a deficiency of a pharmaceutical drug, it's, uh, it's these other things like this. Okay, so here we go. All right, let's ask, is there another underlying reason for this discomfort that you've been having? And the answer is yes. What's the next reason? Is it on the right side? No, it's on the left side. Is it uh, something in the energies area? It is. Let's go here. Is it something on the left side of this chart? No. Is it addictive heart energy or an allergy or an intolerance? It's definitely something emotional. 
And so is this a trapped emotion? No. Uh, heart wall, and emo it's another emotional resonance, okay? And so let's see what this is. Um, is, this in a, uh, is this a frequency that's in column A? Every emotion has its own frequency. Is it in column A? No, it's in column B. Is it in one of the odd rows? Yes. Is it in row one? Yes. So this is either effort unreceived, is that it? No. Is it heartache? It's a resonance of heartache. A resonance of heartache, okay. Uh, do we need to know more about this? We do. You're 53, did this occur earlier than age 30? Yes. Earlier than 20? Yep. Earlier than 10? No. So 10 to 20. Between 10 to 15? No. Around 16, 17, 18, 19. Resonance from around age 19. So your subconscious mind is saying, yeah, something happened. I felt this emotion of heartache. It was really powerful. It's left parts of your body ringing with that emotion, with that vibrational frequency of heartache, kind of like a tuning fork. You know, you hit a tuning fork on a desk, boo, just keeps ringing for a while. Part of you is doing mm -hmm. the same thing, boo, ringing with this frequency of heartache. 19, mm -hmm. now you might've been 18, or you might have been 20, but there was something that was powerful that happened around that span somewhere. I can't so think of anything kind of really specific, but during that time, I was living in Utah, going to college. I, I got some depression going, was abusing alcohol. I picked okay. up and moved to New York City to be a nanny for a year. I mean, I just you know did a geographical cure and okay. after that I ended up in Georgia, but it was a, it was okay. a definitely a time of turmoil and depression and, and things like okay. that. So one of the nice things that we can do with something like this is that uh, what you just did is you identified some some very specific time markers. You left Utah. You went to New York. Let's ask: Did this occur be, uh, after you after you left Utah back then? No, so this is before. So it's probably during that time when you know things were not going well. Mm -hmm. Do we need to know anything else about this? I get a no. So let's release okay. it. Okay. Just takes three swipes. Okay, unless it's inherited, that takes ten. Do we release that rose of heartache from you? We did. I'll tell you, I'm not not having much pain in my neck anymore. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, okay. Awesome. So then, would you say that's that that's a zero? Um. <laughs> I can't believe it, but yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, that's why we do this, right? Now, yeah. for those of you that are Gosh. brand new to this, can you see why I was excited? I told you at the beginning, if you're brand new, this is really going to be fun because you, you know, your mind may be blown a little bit, but that's what this is about. So listen, Suzanne, here's the thing, okay? Hopefully. We got all the underlying causes there of what's been going on with your neck. Now, and hopefully your hands won't keep having trouble. Uh, but if they do, or if things, if, if your symptoms start to come back again, okay, sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. If that happens, what it means is there's more what? You think there's maybe some more underlying imbalances that need to get cleared out? Right. Yeah. See, when we have okay. symptoms, whether they're self-sabotage or you know sadness or feeling anxious or we've got some kind of physical or mental or emotional discomfort, uh, those symptoms are really the result of imbalances that are going on inside of us. And now we have the body code and now the body code is how we can find those and get rid of those. And so um, let's see here. Okay, thank you. I'll, uh, I will send you what we did today and but that was really a lot of fun thank you so much for thank you so much that was incredible yeah it's fun to be a guinea pig huh sometimes <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome all right fantastic so let's uh let go back to our presentation really quick here and i want to share something with you now the body code uh, of course is patented you can learn more at bodycodenow.com but i want to share with you what's coming up okay what's in store for the body code the current version of the body code, as it is right now, 
is only going to be available until the 30th of November 2019. Why is that? Because we are completely revamping it and, uh, and redoing it, and we're coming up with an updated and expanded version of the body code that is going to be a subscription version of the body code, and that's going to be sometime in 2020. Okay, so we're going to stop selling the body code as it is. Now, you can still buy it, uh, but you won't be able to buy it after November 30th, 2019. Okay, now if you buy the current version today, that's fine. You'll have access to one year of the subscription version once it launches. Okay, anyway, so the, the, the body code as we know it is changing. There, there are some reasons for this. We, you know, this version of the body code came out in 2013. Now think about how much technology has changed and advanced since then. And we've been supporting this current version of the body code and uh, it's gotten more and more and more difficult for us to keep supporting it. And so, because the technology is just changing so, so rapidly and so radically. Anyway, this is what's happening, and I'm making the announcement today. Again, this current version is only available until November 30th, okay? So, so again, if you buy it today, you'll have access to a year of the subscription version once it launches, and that will be included, okay? You'll have a free year of the subscription version once it launches, okay? So, what's the ultimate path for you? Well, if you really want to get good at this stuff, what we strongly recommend that you do is you start with a motion code certification. Did you notice today how many of the imbalances that people had going on were actually because of their emotional baggage? That's why we start you with a motion code certification. You learn the concepts from the ground up uh, so you can learn more and enroll at Discover Healing.